Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. Um, if you've already signed, <laughs> if you've already subscribed to our channel, thank you very much. If you haven't, please do. And when you do, you can tap on the like button for us too. Okay, here I am, a little bit, a little bit disorganized. You could probably tell that, but we're still working on my buddy Mike's bike, and. From our last video, if you remember, it was pretty nasty in there. And all I did was wash it out. Most of I did just wiping it clean with a rag. And uh, amazingly, it cleaned up real nice. It's in pretty decent shape. I took it apart. The clutch basket is about to fall apart. And I'll show that in a later video. But I took the clutch hub out. And the clutch hub is in remarkably good shape. That's a little wear, not much. And the lining here on this cork, which is what the basket bottoms against, the bearing here and then the clutch basket goes on. Well, it's cracked and the rivets are not set as deep as I'd like to see them. So I dug through my stuff and I had a new lining. So I'm going to put it on now. So basically, that's what we're doing today. So over here to the drill press, and I designed a, a very elaborate fixture here with a couple of pieces of two by four. So I want to drill these rivets out on the back side. So here we go. Now one of the things to remember here is go very slow because if you snag this drill bit you could really hurt yourself okay it's a good idea to stop for each rivet. Start again. Get the drill bit centered. You don't want to go so deep that you start getting into the steel hub. All you want to do is get that brass rivet out of there. Okay, here we go. I think there's eight of them. Now it's a real quick little job, but taking it slow. is the best idea. left. And that was it. Now we're going to knock those rivets out of there. Again, there's about eight of them. Not about eight, there's eight. Now you want to use a drill bit that's a little bit large so that you're just taking the top of that rivet off. And excuse me. Just ran into the camera.
And there it is. Now we don't need to make a mess here. Need to uh, activate the compressor. And there it is. There is that lining with its with its cracks and it's not bad but did not make me happy. So now we're going to come over here and rivet it. Let me get one of these towels here. Wipe the oil off just so it's nicer to work with. I think the last time we used this little riveter, I lined some brake shoes for the knucklehead. And uh, same little riveter. Now, for anyone who's interested, I know the first time I saw one I really was interested, is this little riveter um, can be had from companies that supply aircraft tools. I don't know all of those companies, but that's what it is. They're used in aircraft. And to fit the brake shoes on it, I had to grind a couple of reliefs on it. But it works real well. So I'm going to put a rivet in here. I put it in from there. Of course, i got to have the dog hair on here. And here we go onto the riveter. You can see how this die here goes on to the rivet. Now that little clutch lining piece um, comes with its rivets. So if you order one, you get the rivets with it, and they're the right size. Okay, there it is. He said as he tried to hold it carefully in place. Now the first rivet, you don't want to bottom completely, because you want to be sure that the rest of them line up. Well, normally do one on one side, and then turn it over to the other side and that way I'll get this thing lined up. Smack it one. I like to go around and hit them all again when I'm done. Okay, centered in there real nice. Like I said, just putting them in across from each other gets them centered. but I think this is fun. <laughs> I actually enjoy this job. One of those kind of things. Maybe it's those shiny brass rivets. I don't know.
only having two hands, it's easiest if I take that, that piece out of the tool. I think this is a first. Or it's going to be a first. To get all eight rivets in there without dropping one. I think for the first time I got them all in without dropping any of them. Now I'm going to go around and smack each one of them again. Now if I lose my count, I don't know what will happen. Let's see here. There's one. Two. Three, four, ah. got my fingers stuck between the fingers, five, six, Seven, and the last one here would be number eight. Well, there it is. All nice and deep on there, all centered up. The lining is on there and fresh and new. Um, just for fun, we'll stick it back on the main shaft. I did find a new key for. I'm just going to let it sit there for now because I need to lube the bearings and put it all together, which I will do in the next video. There's bearings in the cage and all that stuff to be assembled with the other basket. And I've got to resurface some plates. I've got some plates are good, some are bad. The stuff that's bad we're not using. We're using stuff that's not as bad. It's kind of interesting. Well, I was going to show that when we get there. We'll, we'll get there in the next video when I put this clutch together. We'll take a real tour of it. I've actually done it in previous videos, but we're doing it on this one now and trying to take it all in an order that's easy to follow. Uh, I did get the uh, clutch rod pulled out that was kind of seized in there. And I've got a new one ordered that will be here in the next day or two. So we'll probably build the clutch before we put that rod back in there. So we'll be doing that next time uh, on the next video. We'll be putting the clutch together. So until then, I'll see you out on the road.